Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the York series. Sitting within North Yorkshire, York is a very historic place with 31 civil parishes within its city boundaries. Here's one of them for your enjoyment. Welcome back to York everybody for the third in this series and uh, today you catch me on Long Ridge Lane and you might remember that from the last episode if you watched it because we did the first of the two Poppleton twins in that one that was Nether Poppleton and I stopped my walk just up there at that bus stop well this is the continuation of that walk because today we're in Upper Poppleton Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to the second of the Poppleton twins. This is Upper Poppleton, which as we learned in last week's episode, was often referred to as Land Poppleton. Upper Poppleton has many similarities to its eastern counterpart. Like Nether Poppleton, it too was once part of the borough of Harrogate until 1996. Again, the village is mentioned in both the Doomsday Book and the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles, and it became a conservation area in 1993. So what's different, you ask? Well, for starters, the village is much more clustered. Most of Upper Poppleton's landmarks are centred around a fabulous village green, which marks the centre of the old village. It's not hard to see how, over time, Nether Poppleton and Upper Poppleton have both expanded to the point where they've amalgamated together thanks to modern housing development. That said, Upper Poppleton does still retain its unique character. The Poppletons were formerly agricultural settlements with many farms, but the modern village is mostly a dormitory affair. The village has local retail facilities including a post office and some small enterprises. It also has three pubs, two of which are on our walk around, with the third on the village's outskirts. Oh, and there's a maypole too. Time for Upper Poppleton, folks. We begin where we left off last week on Long Ridge Lane, and after walking from the bus stop at the parish boundary, we come to this house, which has an unusual conical tower. How about that for a characterful property? Most of Upper Poppleton is based around its green, including this building, All Saints Hall. This is linked to All Saints Church as its community hall. It describes itself as a fantastic location and venue for all sorts of events. Opposite that, we have a dental surgery. Now, the addresses of everything else we're about to see are all given as the green, but in brackets, I've included which street they stand on, as the green is flanked by both Main Street and Hodgson Lane. There's no disputing the address for this, though. Towering over the green is a maypole, which is made from a single piece of wood and stands about 65 feet high. I found a wonderful but very long backstory for this one. It's linked below. And there's a few more things on this screen as well yet, which we'll come to shortly. I must admit, Upper Poppleton seems to have a lot of landmarks clustered into one area, and this is that area. As well as the ones I've shown you, there's a few up there, and they're all sort of lined along this road here. And once you get past the War Memorial over there, 
it tends then to get a little bit more residential. So a lot of my time here will be spent on this green. Also on the green is a water pump. There's at least three of these in Upper Poppleton. Originally, these pumps and the local wells provided the village's drinking water. A piped water supply was brought to the Poppletons in 1939. From water supply to a watering hole, here we have the Lord Collingwood, one of three pubs within Upper Poppleton's boundaries. This one is Grade 2 listed, having stood here since the 17th century. It's good for food, apparently. Next we have the church. Dedicated to All Saints, this has a foundation stone dated 1891. Before this existed, an old Norman chapel dedicated to All Hallows was here, which was demolished to make way for it. This new church was designed by Hodgson Fowler of Durham. The church has a wildlife area within its churchyard, which offers a sanctuary to local fauna, as does the wild area at the back of Chantry Green, which is coming later. And just like in Nether Poppleton, the church here in Upper is open as well. And it's very dark in here. Oh, the light switch is here. There we go. Well, one of the light switches anyway, because that's just, that's just lit this end of the church up. I assume there's another one somewhere else. And again, there's a painting or print in here, just like there was in Nether Poppleton. Let's head down towards the chancel, see what we've got. I'm hoping another light switch. Yeah, there's one on the wall there. Let's uh, turn the lights on, see what we've got. Oh, it's not a light switch. That's not a light switch. Oh, well, that is. But that is. Okay, so that's. So there we are. Put some light on the situation. Here we go. This is beautiful. Look at that ceiling. Isn't that amazing? Nikki would love this. But of course, Nikki's not with me this morning. That is amazing. Isn't it just? I love how it's beautifully kept as well. It looks like it's had a, a fresh lick of paint at some point as well. Now, what are they over there? Because I've just spotted something unusual. Oh, it's okay. It's me, it's nothing, nothing important. It was these pews I saw, that obviously uh, not as fancy as I thought they were. Cross at the back there. And uh, bell ropes at the far end. Something on this wall. Oh, it's a roll of honour. Roll of honour. We will see the War Memorial shortly when we go back outside. Yeah, so all in all, both the Poppleton churches are lovely, aren't they? Brilliant. This is Coffee on the Green, which is a community cafe linked to the village's Methodist church. This used to be the former Sunday school, although the original chapel once stood here. It was built in 1817 and looked like a doll's house. In 1889, a bigger chapel, this building, was built beside it, and the original chapel was demolished to make way for the Sunday school. On the 13th of July, 1757, John Wesley himself preached on the green here in Upper Poppleton. I wonder what he would make of the village these days. Apparently on that evening, it was violently hot. Perhaps if he was here now and the weather was similar, he could go to the local co-op on Main Street to get himself a drink. And where Main Street, Hodgson Lane and Station Road all meet, we find Upper Poppleton's War Memorial. This remembers 11 men from World War I and one who died in the Afghanistan conflict between 2001 and 2014. You see what I mean about everything being around this one area? Even the bus stop is here as well. And we haven't really gone very far, have we? And we've seen quite a lot. There's still a library and a community centre to see as well, according to that sign. And there's also a pub over there next to the co-op too. And that pub is the White Horse, which is considerably younger than the Lord Collingwood, having only been here since the 1900s. It used to actually be painted white, but these days it's this attractive greeny blue colour. 
Next door is the Poppleton Pharmacy, and that goes hand in hand with the surgery across the road. I tell you, Poppleton as a combined settlement is a place which is lacking absolutely nothing. I would easily live here. The surgery is notable too because it's housed inside an old forge. This is the Haxby Group practice, which is open during the week only between the hours of 8am and 6pm. Now we start to leave the green behind. Walking up Main Street we come to a B&B. This is Grove House. You know last week when I said Nether Poppleton has more than Upper Poppleton? After walking through both villages, I'm not so sure anymore. Okay, the landmarks start to get a bit more thin on the ground now as we head back up towards where we started the Nether Poppleton episode. Um, just passing Lime Tree House here, which is a residential care home. Thinner on the ground they may be, but there's still a parish notice board along here, which is next to one of the other two village pumps. You can now officially mark off both Poppleton twins, folks. They're in the books. This area opposite is the Chantry Green. Now, forgive me if Upper Poppleton never had a Chantry, but I reckon it did, despite the fact I found nothing about one. There did seem to be some kind of building remains at the back of this. And now we've come away from Main Street and into Poppleton's suburbia. Centuries ago, you would have been able to easily determine what was Upper and what was Nether Poppleton. Not these days. This is Applegarth. Around the corner on Ebor Way, we find a standalone post box, and this one is another one from the era of George VI, which means I saw two of these in the same day. The other one was located in Skelton. Okay, right turn at the end of this road, and that will take us back towards the main road, if you like, the one which we were walking on before we turned into this estate, and that will take us towards the park, where we began the Nether Poppleton episode. Still got to catch the library and a community centre, and uh, that's really about it, on the walk at least. Our last section sees us back on Main Street, and here we have the library. This was built in the 1960s. Behind this is Poppleton Oosebank Primary School, which provides primary education for both Poppleton villages. You might recall the old school buildings in last week's episode. The 1797 school was founded by a local ironmonger, John Dodsworth, and then the 1850 school on Millfield Lane would take over. This is the modern educational establishment. Almost all the way around now, our last stop is the village's main sports area, which includes this bowling green. This has been playable since 1981. It stands adjacent to some tennis courts and the Poppleton Centre. The tennis courts are used by Poppleton Lawn Tennis Club, and the Poppleton Centre, a community centre, was opened in 1989. Poppleton United, members of the York Football League, play their home games right here too. Okay, and the last thing I was going to talk about would be the uh, the park which is next to it, but there's children on it at the moment, so I can't really do anything about that. It's behind the camera as uh, you look at things. Uh, opposite that, there's a, uh, a pitch of some description, some small goals there, not football goals, look like hockey goals actually. So uh, yeah, that's the end point, and my car is parked just outside this on the road. Time for today's picture bit for Upper Poppleton, but there is one more thing we still need to talk about after it.
So both the Poppletons are served by a railway station and it's not called Upper Poppleton and it's not called Nether Poppleton. It just goes by the simple name Poppleton. <laughs> and here it is. And check out these crossing gates, by the way. Aren't these fantastic? You don't see many like this anymore, do you? That is fantastic. Let's have a, a little chat about this next, shall we? Poppleton Railway Station stands on the Harrogate Line, which runs between Leeds and York via Harrogate. We briefly got a look at the line last week. The station is the first stop on the line to the west of York. The station is one reason why Poppleton is so big. The village benefited from the growth in the railways in the 19th century when the line was routed through Poppleton and this very station was erected. The line is double track between Poppleton and Skelton Junction. West of Poppleton, the line becomes single track as far as Hamerton. The station has a horticultural nursery which used to supply plants across Yorkshire's stations. The nursery has its own railway line, a two foot narrow gauge affair which still operates around it. For me though, Poppleton's standout features are the level crossing gates and the signal box, both of which are rare finds these days. And that's it, that's the parish of Upper Poppleton, which is very difficult to say by the way. I've, uh, on occasion, you know, with me having a stutter, a very slight stutter, it's very difficult to say things like that, uh, Upper Poppleton, because of all the P's. Um, so I have tripped up, tripped up, I trip over that as well. <laughs> I have tripped over my words a few times today, um, so uh, yeah, I have edited some stuff out of this, but uh, not too much, thankfully. Anyway, uh, time for me to move on to my next one here in York, and hopefully next time I come up to York to catch something up here, the rain will have disappeared. Um, it's not been very nice, quite frankly, but uh, you know, what can you do? You can't help the weather, can you? I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot. This has been the parish of Upper Poppleton, and I'm out. Just before we leave the Poppletons behind, I can't go without mentioning Flora Sands. Now, technically, this is in the wrong episode because the lady in question was born in Nether Poppleton. However, regardless of the village I'm talking about, she deserves her own section. Initially a St John Ambulance volunteer, Flora Sands served as a member of the Royal Serbian Army in World War I. She was the only British woman officially to serve as a soldier in that war. She was decorated with seven medals. After enrolling in the Serbian army, she would eventually be promoted to the rank of Sergeant Major and after the war to Captain. There's a street in the Serbian capital, Belgrade, which is named after her. Sands survived the war and spent the last years of her life in Suffolk, living at Lower Hatcheston near Wickham Market. She died at the East Suffolk and Ipswich Hospital on the 24th of November 1956 and was cremated at Ipswich Crematorium.